In this video, I'm going to solve a practice problem in which a box is pulled across a horizontal surface with an angled applied force or an angled tension force. So let's get right into it. A, a 38 kilogram box is pulled across a horizontal floor with a rope that is angled at 40 degrees above the horizontal. The tension in the rope is 170 newtons. If the coefficient of friction is 0 0.86, find the acceleration of the box. And for the situation above, find the normal force on the box. So let's start with a free body diagram. Make it nice and big. This is our box. One force is going to be gravity pulling down. Force of gravity. Uh, force of gravity. There's also going to be a normal force that points perpendicular to the surface, so that's up in this case. Um, the tension force is at an angle of 40 degrees above the horizontal, so I'm going to do a dotted line here to represent the horizontal. And since it's about 40 degrees above, tension is going to be somewhere around here. I'm going to label F, T. And it says that the coefficient of friction is 0.86. We need to find the acceleration of the box. Okay, so that means since there's a coefficient of friction, there is going to be a frictional force. Force from friction. Um, so we should just start solving what we can solve. Then we're going to break our vectors into components. And then we will uh, do what we can. Uh, so number one, let's find the force of gravity. Force of gravity equals mg. So that's 38 kilograms times 9.8. 81 meters per second squared. Force of gravity ends up being, plug in on a calculator, the force of gravity ends up being 373 newtons. And I'm adding an additional sig fig here uh, because I'm not, uh, well, I'm, I'm going to round to correct sig figs at the very end. Uh, it should be two sig figs at the very end, but I'm going to keep it as 373 for now. Let's include that in our free body diagram, 373 newtons. We also know that the tension in the rope is 170 newtons. And I'm also going to label this angle. That's an angle of 40 degrees. Um, we don't, we aren't given any other forces. The normal force is not going to be equal to the force of gravity because there's tension that's pulling up in the y direction uh, as well. So we can't actually solve for anything else yet. Um, let's resolve our vector into its components. I'm going to do that in green. So we have a horizontal component and a vertical component. This is going to be F, T, Y. This is going to be F, T, X. Um, so if we want to solve for our components, we have to use trig. We want to solve for FTY. That's the leg of the triangle that is opposite our angle, 40 degrees. And we know the hypotenuse, the tension, so opposite and hypotenuse, that's going to be sine of 40 degrees equals FTY over, uh, over the tension, which is 170 newtons. And when we solve it, we get FTY equals 170 newtons sine of 40 degrees. And so FTY is going to be 170 sine of 40. Make sure that I'm in degree mode. 109 newtons. 109 newtons. Let's underline that. And we can do the same thing for FTX. Since x is the leg adjacent to our angle, and we know the hypotenuse, it's going to be cosine. Uh, cosine of 40 degrees is adjacent over hypotenuse, so Ftx over 170 newtons. And that gives us Ftx equals 170 newtons cos of 40 degrees and FTX ends up being 170 
cos of 40. 130 newtons. Underline that. We can add those to our free body diagram if we want. I'm going to do that. Fty is uh, 109 newtons. Ftx is 130 newtons. OK. Uh, well, so now we have all of our vectors resolved into components. Uh, we have the coefficient of friction, but we don't have the normal force or the force of friction, so we can't use that yet. We're going to have to use Newton's laws uh, to figure out uh, to figure out our other forces, to figure out our acceleration, to figure out our normal force. Now, uh, we can look in either the x direction or the y direction. Um, Uh, however, if we tried to solve in the x direction, we would have two unknowns because the acceleration is unknown and uh, the frictional force is unknown. So we can't do, we're not going to be able to get anywhere with that, at least not just yet. So let's look in the y direction and set up Newton's laws in the y direction. Some of the forces in the y direction equals mass times acceleration in the y direction. Normal forces in the y direction plus F T Y. And gravity's down, so it's minus force of gravity equals mass times acceleration in the y. But since you're sliding it across a horizontal floor, the acceleration is zero. So those all add up to zero. We solve for, well, we know Fty, we know Fg, so we solve for the normal force. Normal force is gravity minus tension. So our normal force is just 373 newtons minus our y component of tension, 109 newtons. Our normal force is then equal to 264 newtons. 264 newtons. And for our final answer, we are going to round that to correct sig figs, but I'm going to wait. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. I'm going to wait for our final answer before we do that. Okay, uh, so there's our normal force. That's actually part B. Let's solve for the acceleration of the box. Well, actually, we can't quite do that yet because, again, we still have two unknowns in the x direction, um, friction and the acceleration. But let's fill in our normal force here, 264 newtons. Now, even though we have two unknowns, we can still... Uh, we can actually solve for the force of friction because we know the coefficient of friction. Um, and we know that the force of friction equals the coefficient of friction times the normal force. So it's going to be equal to 0 0.86 times our normal force is 264 newtons. Our frictional force is then going to be 0.86 times 264, 227 newtons. So let's fill that in our free body diagram, 227 newtons. Um, great. Now let's finally use Newton's second law in the x direction, and we'll be able to, uh, we'll be able to get what we need. We'll be able to get the acceleration. So uh, five, sum of the forces in the x direction equals mass times acceleration in the x-direction. Um, we choose the positive direction to be the direction of the acceleration. You may notice that friction is greater than the x-component of tension, so left is actually the direction our, of our acceleration. I'm going to draw a leftward vector here. Acceleration points to the left. So left is positive. Uh, so we have frictional force in the positive direction minus Ftx equals m a x. We divide both sides by m. M cancels, and we've solved for the acceleration. It's frictional force minus Ftx over the mass. So that's going to end up being a equals 
frictional force is 227 newtons minus 109 newtons over 38 kilograms. So our acceleration is equal to 227 minus 109 all divided by 38, 3.10 or 3.11 meters per second squared and it points to the left. Uh, so let's, uh, let's make a note of what this means. Since we're pulling it to the right and the acceleration is to the left, that means the net force is to the left, it is slowing down. So maybe we just reduce the force on the, on the string and so it's starting to slow down. Uh, so I'm going to box my final answers right here. Acceleration equals 3.1 meters per second squared. That's to correct sig figs. And my normal force is 260 newtons to correct sig figs. Hope that was helpful. Bye.